Once we have determined our testing method, uh, we are ready to design and experiment and collect data. Now for this class, we're not going to be doing a focus on seven. In fact, most of the time, like when we're doing our problems uh, for our homework and our exams, uh, the design of the experiment and the collecting of the data has already been done. And when we check our assumptions, we're just checking to make sure that whoever did the experimental design and collected the data actually did it well. Uh, but there are whole classes just devoted on to how do you design a good experiment, how do you do a good job of collecting your data or sampling, and hopefully we will be able to take a little bit of time and maybe do a few, um, a few experiments on our own where we are actually able to collect data and see how that process actually works. Um, but we're just kind of going to leave it at this level for right now. So after we do that, we need to calculate our test statistic. So when we calculate our test statistic, it helps us know how kind of like strange of a result did we see given that the null hypothesis is actually true. So when we are calculating these test statistics, you actually already know basically how to do this. Oh, you've done it before, we just didn't call it a test statistic yet. So we're going to call this basically, it's, we're going to calculate a t value, and we're going to be calculating at a z value, uh, depending upon the testing method that, that we use. Uh, but those are, you know how to calculate out the t's and the z's. Uh, we just have a slightly different method. The equations change just a tiny bit. Uh, instead of using mu, we use mu naught. So like, uh, I'll put up the t equation, right? This is going to be x bar minus mu naught, the hypothesized mean, because we don't know what the true mean is, um, divided by, uh, this would be our uh, s divided by the square root of n. And for a z, if we were dealing with means, right, this would be x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma divided by the square root of n. Or if we're dealing with proportions, uh, this is going to be p minus pi naught, where's my naught, or yeah, pi naught divided by square root of p minus pc divided by n. Okay, so a slight change. Instead of using the true mean, we're using the hypothesized means or the hypothesized true proportion uh, in order to calculate out our test statistics. So it just lets us know how kind of strange of a result that, that we have. Uh, graphically, we're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true until we get enough evidence to suggest otherwise. So if I were to draw this out, right, we're still going to be dealing with a normal distribution here. Uh, either the original distribution is going to be normal or we're going to invoke the central uh, limit theorem um, by saying that the sampling distribution is normally distributed. Hypothesis testing really relies on this foundation of our normal distribution. Okay, and so we're going to say that the middle here is mu naught. And we're going to get some, uh, some sort of x bar, or it could be that this, I could change this to pi naught and p's, but I'm just going to use mu's for right now. Let's say that I get an x bar, some value that's right here, that that is what my sample got. Okay, and then let's, let's include in, let's kind of go back to five, let's put in an alpha here. Let's say I did a two-tailed test, and I did, I had maybe alpha divided by two over on this side, and I had alpha divided by two on this side. So in the blue, that's going to be alpha divided by the number two, and this guy, alpha divided by two. All right, so this is kind of what, what we're doing. We're trying to see, is our sample 
like so far away from what the hypothesized value is, are we willing to reject the null hypothesis? Are we willing to claim that this is not true? Okay, so when we when we calculate our test statistic, this is this is kind of what we're doing. For our Z's and our T's, it's just going to let us know how many standard deviations away from the mean we are. Um, the reporting format that we're going to use on this is APA. We'll cover that in another video. All right, and then we also need to do and the p-value. All right, this is a new thing that we need to figure out. Let's say and calculate the p-value. All right, so the p-value, you know what, let's, uh, that's fine. The p-value is has a very specific definition to it. Let's, let's give our p-value a definition. So the p-value is the probability of seeing a sample result um, as extreme or more extreme uh, as what you observed given the null hypothesis is true. And I want to underline and really emphasize this part right here. Okay, so once again, p-value, the probability of seeing a sample result as extreme or more extreme as what you observed given the null hypothesis is true. All right, so remember the null hypothesis says that the hypothesized mean is the true mean. And we're, our sample is kind of way out here. And we're wanting to know uh, if we want to know what the p-value is. And the p-value is going to give me the probability of seeing the sample result this extreme or more extreme. Okay, so the p-value very simply is this orange area under the curve. So now I've got basically from this point or more extreme. And when I do two tails, you wind up having to, there's a little bit of kind of juggling of how you actually calculate the p-value. We'll go over that once again in another video. But basically it's just the probability of seeing this result as extreme or more extreme. We just need to find the area uh, under the, the curve. And we can, we can use our software and it will calculate that out for us. And if our p-value is less than our alpha value, we are going to say that we reject the null hypothesis. So we're at our next spot. Number nine. We're going to reject the null, or uh, reject or fail to reject. Okay, so when we do this, we're not like proving the, the, the null hypothesis, what we're basically saying is we've either collected enough data to suggest that the null hypothesis is wrong, or we're saying we didn't collect enough evidence to, subject the, to suggest that the null hypothesis is in fact wrong. So in this example, where my orange has landed inside of this blue region, it's landed in what we have called the rejection region. So if our, if our um, observation, our sample, it lands inside of the rejection region, we're saying that it is such a weird result that it's more likely, or, or we want to claim that this null hypothesis is in fact not exactly true, that, the new, that we think that it's actually in a different spot, the true mean is actually in a different spot than where the hypothesized mean uh, is claiming that it is. So 
if that happens, we can reject the null hypothesis. And we can either look at it falling into these rejection regions, or what we can do is we can compare the p-value to alpha. All right, so I'm going to kind of write this up over here because I'm running out of room. I guess I'll write it down here. So I can say if the p-value is less than alpha, we are going to reject the null. And then if the p-value, so that, that's how we reject the null, and then I'll put down here, if p-value is greater than or equal to our alpha, we are going to say that we fail to reject. The null. One thing that, that we want to be careful about is saying like we prove something. With hypothesis testing, we're not we, we're unable to like prove definitively that something is the case. Is it possible that we just got a really weird sample? Absolutely, it's possible that we got a weird sample and then we just made a bad decision. Um, so what, what we are saying is that if the p-value is less than alpha, we're saying that it's so weird that we're willing to say that we think that the true mean or the true proportion is actually in a different location. If the p-value is greater than alpha, where if our x-bar instead, we'll do another, yeah, we'll do. let's say our x-bar instead was here, well, since it's not very far away from the true or from the hypothesized mean, we'd say, you know what, we didn't get enough data to suggest that it's that it's different from what the hypothesized value should be. So that's kind of where where we are going to stop this video by saying we design our experiments to collect our data. We then have to calculate out our test statistic and the p-value, and based upon that p-value, we can either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then based upon this, we will then talk about how we can write a conclusion about our hypothesis testing.